Hey, future charter holders, ready to tackle one of the most, well, exciting, I'd say, areas of corporate finance. Excited? You mean corporate restructuring? Yeah, I know, I know. It doesn't have the same um, flash as something like derivatives, maybe. Mm -hmm. But trust me, this stuff is crucial, especially if you're aiming for that level two CFA. You're not wrong about that. It's all about understanding the moves companies make. Mergers, acquisitions, divestitures, sometimes even uh, bankruptcies. You know, the fun stuff. Exactly. And not just knowing what they did, but why. What were they thinking? Did it work? Could you have predicted it? We're going to break it all down for you in this deep dive. First things first, we need to think big picture. The corporate life cycle. Every company like us goes through different stages. Startup, growth, maturity, maybe even decline. So picture this, right? You've got this young company, tons of energy. They're burning cash, trying to grab market share. Growth is everything, even if it means, you know, not turning a profit right away. Then, as things mature, revenue growth might slow a bit, but the free cash flow, that starts to peak. Now it's all about maximizing profits, giving those investors a return. But what happens when growth just stops? I mean, companies don't just fade away. Right, they've got options. They can choose to invest, pour resources into new products, try new markets, or divest, get rid of things that aren't working, or even restructure, revamp the whole operation. So it's like making a choice. Yeah. Double down, cut your losses, or shake things up entirely. And we as analysts, we need to figure out not just what they did, but why, and if it was the right move. All right, so we've got this corporate life cycle playing out, and companies are constantly adapting. But what's actually driving these big decisions? What makes a CEO decide, you know what, let's buy our biggest competitor? Well, it's a mix of things. Sometimes it's opportunity. They see a chance to grab a valuable asset or a new market opens up. You got to strike while the iron's hot, right? <laughs> but it's not always about being aggressive. Sometimes it's about survival. Exactly. A company could be drowning in debt. Or maybe their whole industry is getting disrupted. Restructuring can be a way to stay afloat or even reinvent themselves. And let's not forget those external forces that can really throw a wrench in the works. New regulation, some global event, even a, a pandemic. Absolutely. Companies need to be flexible. Look what happened to companies like Blockbuster, right? They didn't adapt and, well, we know the rest. Oof, yeah, not the best example to follow. So it's about having the right tools, the right strategies for each situation. And that's where understanding the different types of corporate restructuring comes in. Exactly. We've got investment actions like equity investments, joint ventures, and full-on acquisitions. So with equity investments, it's like testing the waters, right? You take a stake in another company without, you know, taking over. Right. Joint ventures are more like teaming up. Two or more companies working together on a specific project. Like imagine building a huge infrastructure project. You might need multiple companies to pull that off. And then there are acquisitions, the big ones. One company basically absorbs another. Often it's about synergies. The idea that together they can be more than the sum of their parts. Save money, expand their reach. Like imagine a giant retail company buying an online startup. They get that online presence they might be lacking. But it doesn't always work out that way. Merging two companies, two cultures, that can be messy. Sometimes those synergies just don't materialize. So due diligence is key. Yeah. Making sure it's a good fit, that the numbers make sense, and then, you know, having a plan to actually make it work. Now, acquisitions get a lot of attention, but divestitures, they can be just as important. Selling off assets or spinning off a whole business unit. So it's like cleaning house, right? Getting rid of things that aren't working or don't fit anymore. You can sell a business outright for cash hmm. or spin it off, creating a whole new company. Imagine a company with a really successful tech division, but it's kind of hidden inside this giant, slower moving company. Spinning it off could unlock a lot of value. Divestitures done right can really reshape a company. But again, analysis is key. Making sure it's the right move for the right reasons. Okay, so we've got investments in divestitures. But what about restructuring the core business itself? That's where we get into cost restructuring, balance sheet restructuring, even reorganization. Cost restructuring, I guess that's pretty self-explanatory. Trying to be more efficient, right? It's more than just cutting, though. It's about finding ways to be more efficient without, you know, hurting the business in the long run. So, like, renegotiating contracts, maybe automating some tasks. Yeah. Right. Maybe even relocating operations to a place where costs are lower. Sometimes tough choices have to be made. Then there's balance sheet restructuring. Basically, adjusting the mix of debt and equity a company uses. So, like, refinancing debt to get a lower interest rate. 
or issuing new shares to pay down debt. Exactly. And then reorganizations, those are usually a last resort when a company is in real trouble. Like on the verge of bankruptcy. Could be. It involves negotiating with creditors, maybe selling off assets, just trying to avoid going under completely. It's a pretty intense process. It can be. Not always successful, but sometimes it's the only way to survive. Phew. Okay. We've covered a lot of ground here. Just scratching the surface, really. Right. This is just the intro. In the next parts, we'll really dig into how to analyze these moves, how to understand the financial impact. So stay tuned, folks. We have a lot more to uncover. Welcome back to the deep dive. Last time, we talked about all the different ways companies can restructure. But now, it's time to put on our analyst hats. Yeah. We gotta figure out how to actually evaluate these moves. Yeah. See if they make sense, financially speaking. You got it. We can't just take management's word for it. Gotta look beyond the hype and really dig into the numbers. All right, so how do we do that? Where do we even start? Well, I think a good approach is a three-step process. First, we do an initial evaluation. We gather all the info we can, you know, announcements, filings, all that. Okay, so it's like detective work, right? Piecing together the clues, trying to understand the story behind the deal. Exactly. What's the motivation? Does it make strategic sense? What's the potential impact? And importantly, what's the timeline? We need to know when things are supposed to happen. Got it. Gather the evidence, figure out the timeline, what's next. Then we move on to step two, preliminary valuation. We start comparing the company to its peers, looking at similar deals that have happened in the past. Trying to figure out if the price is right, basically. Are they overpaying? Getting a bargain. Exactly. And we've got a few tools for that. Comparable company analysis, comparable transaction analysis, and even premium paid analysis. Okay, those sound familiar. Let's remind ourselves how those work starting with comparable company analysis. Right, so we find publicly traded companies that are similar to the one we're analyzing. Same industry, similar size, growth prospects. Then we look at their valuation multiples. So like their price to earnings ratio or enterprise value to EBITDA. Trying to see how they stack up. Exactly. Let's say we're looking at an acquisition in the tech industry. We'd find other tech companies with similar growth rates, profitability, and compare their multiples. If the target company is trading at a much lower multiple, well, that could be a sign that the buyer is getting a good deal. But we gotta be careful, right? Not all companies are created equal, even if they're in the same industry. Absolutely, we need to think critically. Do they have the same growth potential? Are they facing the same risks? It's about understanding the nuances. Right, we're not just plugging numbers into a formula. We got to use our brains too. So what about comparable transaction analysis? With this one, we look at past acquisitions, similar deals in the same industry. See what kind of premiums buyers were willing to pay in the past. So if historically companies in this industry have been acquired a 15% premium and this deals at a 30% premium, that would raise some eyebrows, right? Exactly. It could be justified, but we'd need to understand why is there something special about this company? Some strategic reason for paying more? Makes sense. So we're looking for those red flags, those things that don't quite add up. Now, what about premium paid analysis? What does that tell us? Premium paid analysis focuses on that extra amount that acquirers often pay to gain control of a company. It's the price of power, you could say. So if a company is really desperate to acquire a competitor or gain access to some key technology, they might be willing to pay a higher premium. Exactly. The more attractive the target, the more competitive the landscape, the higher the premium tends to be. Okay, so we've gathered our intel, done our preliminary evaluation. What's the final step in this process? Now we get to the nitty gritty, financial modeling and valuation. This is where we build those detailed pro forma financial statements, those projections of what the combined company will look like. So it's like looking into a crystal ball trying to predict the future. You could say that. We're trying to see how the deal will impact key metrics earnings per share, debt levels, and ultimately, the company's value. This is where those Excel skills come in handy. We're building a model that combines the financials of the acquirer and the target, factoring in things like financing costs, expected synergies. It's complex, but it's crucial. We need to understand how the deal will affect profitability, cash flow, and the overall financial risk of the combined company. And speaking of risk, we can't forget about the company's Weighted Average Cost of Capital, or WACC. Right, that discount rate we use in our valuation models. A restructuring can change a company's capital structure, its risk profile. Like if they take on a lot of debt to finance the deal, their cost of capital will probably go up. Exactly. 
So we need to adjust our WACC accordingly. It's all connected. Okay, so we've got our framework for analyzing corporate restructurings. We gather intel, do a preliminary evaluation, build our financial models, and make sure our WACC is up to date. Sounds about right. And in the next part, we'll take all of this knowledge and apply it to specific types of restructurings. We'll look at equity investments, joint ventures, acquisitions, and more. So stay tuned, because things are about to get even more interesting. All right, welcome back to the deep dive. We've explored how companies invest and divest, but now let's talk about those moves they make to, I guess you could say, optimize their existing business. Exactly. We're talking about restructuring actions. Those changes companies make to streamline operations, improve their financials. Sometimes it's proactive, sometimes it's a necessity. So it's like instead of adding or subtracting businesses, they're trying to fine tune the ones they already have. Exactly. We're talking cost restructuring, balance sheet restructuring, and those, well, sometimes dramatic reorganizations. Okay, let's break it down. Starting with, I guess, the most obvious one, cost restructuring. It might seem simple, cutting costs, right? But it's more than just slashing budgets randomly. It's about carefully analyzing every aspect of a business. So it's about finding ways to be more efficient without hurting the company in the long run. Exactly. Maybe it's streamlining processes, automating some tasks, or it could involve renegotiating contracts with suppliers, maybe even outsourcing some functions. And sometimes those tough choices have to be made, right? Like layoffs, maybe closing facilities. Those are never easy decisions, but sometimes they're necessary to ensure the company's survival. So it's a delicate balance, making sure you're cutting costs in the right areas for the right reasons. Now, what about balance sheet restructuring? Balance sheet restructuring is all about optimizing the mix of debt and equity a company uses. Right, because too much debt can be a problem. Absolutely. It can put a huge strain on cash flow, make it harder to invest in growth. So they might look at refinancing that debt, getting a lower interest rate. Or they could issue new equity, use that money to pay down some debt. Exactly. It's about finding that right balance, a capital structure that supports their goals. Okay. And then there's reorganizations. Those sound a bit more uh, intense. Yeah. Reorganizations are usually a last resort mm -hmm. for companies in serious financial distress. You know, yeah. facing bankruptcy. So what happens during a reorganization? Well, it often involves negotiating with creditors. Maybe they agree to swap some of their debt for ownership in the company. It's a pretty big concession. It can be. And there might be asset sales to raise some much needed cash. They might have to restructure their operations, make some big changes to become more profitable. So it's a pretty high stakes process. Absolutely. It's a fight for survival. And sadly, it doesn't always work. But sometimes it's the only way for a company to get a fresh start, you know, a chance to turn things around. Well, that brings us to the end of our deep dive into corporate restructuring. We've covered a lot, haven't we? We have. From those big picture decisions like mergers and acquisitions to the more nuanced moves like cost cutting and debt management. It's a complex world for sure. But hopefully you've gained some valuable insights here today. Absolutely. Understanding these concepts is essential, not just for CFA exams, but for anyone who wants to make smart investment decisions. So to all those future charter holders out there, keep learning, keep asking questions, and may your portfolios always be balanced and profitable. And remember, the world of corporate finance is always changing. So stay curious, stay informed. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. Until next time.